give you who JPY or GPUSD? I decided to choose both because they both correlate positively. Yes, but, so, then, but then we're going to have to do a session on that to see how you can use that to your advantage. Um, let's use GPUSD. Okay. I want to clear my chat. All right, so we start on the monthly time frame, right? All right. Yes. Okay, so if when you're doing your analysis, right, you start on the monthly time frame, but then it's not always every day that you do your monthly analysis. You can't do it every day because it's the monthly time frame. It barely has any changes every single day. So we're going to go on the monthly time frame. Right. So you know how um when you're beginning forex, most people always tell you to look at the left to always um yeah the to past use, uh, charts. Use, yes, to use to use the past for your for your analysis, right? So, yes. but, what, but what we're going to do right here, right, is hmm, we're going to use the current price, if that makes sense. Does it make sense? Nice. All right. So, we use the current price. So, instead of using let's say maybe this area for our analysis, we're going to use the present or the current price, whatnot. So I'm going to start with, do you see this high? Yeah. And this low. You see them, right? Yeah, I do, I do. All right. All right. If you see them, then that's great. All right. So, what you need to do is identify your high and your low. But then it has to be the most recent high and the most recent low. Because if price was to break one way, or well, if price was to break, um, let's say your your current resistance and then it's aiming for the next resistance that's on the monthly time frame all you need to do is to have it highlighted so that on your lower time frames when you're trading you know that price has reached this area you don't need to put um support and resistance on the whole chart just the area that you're using to trade at that moment so right now this is our monthly chart right i would have my resistance this one my support another support and then we actually do have um, what was what was um, resistance, but now support. This is also a very um, important area. That was our resistance. Um, price did take long to break, but then it finally did. So this will be the only zones that I'll put on the on the monthly time frame. However, to make things interesting, do you see where price is at right now? Yeah. Um, if you look at your left, we have these three, four candles that are very uh, next to each other, they're very close to each other. They're very next, they're next to each other, right? So now this area becomes a zone. So you could put a resistance here since price is, be is below then you have a resistance there we're putting the resistance because of this price section it's not mm. that it's not that it's not it's not a strong resistance it's a minor resistance it's a minor strong resistance in a way because so price went up and then it came down and then it went up right and then it came down it, it created a range around this area Okay. This one is the main, is the main, um, the main one, the strong one. This one is a minor one. It's a, it's, it's a minor zone because of this price action. 
So price was creating a range right here, but then the next candle fell. It, it didn't leave a week. It didn't range in the, in the range area. It just fell. That means that whole area now, this whole, it's a zone. So when you're trading it, you have to watch out because price can do anything in that area. You just have to know that. And that's okay. where price, then this is the resistance that price needs to break for it to keep on going up. So that's the information that we're given on the monthly time frame. Then we break it down to the weekly time frame. On the weekly time frame, On the weekly time frame, right? All you have to do is adjust your zones. So you adjust your zones, or you put in new ones that you couldn't see on the monthly time frame. So on the weekly time frame, we would leave this one, the resistance that's already there. Do you not see it? The area that we that, that we're talking about on the monthly time frame, and how it's a minor zone. See, price gave us a clear price action. This is clean traffic. Um, okay, this isn't, okay, let me do this. Let me do this one. This is an example of clean traffic. Um, this is an example of clean traffic. This is an example of clean traffic. Um, this is an example of clean traffic. That's all clean traffic. And that's the area that's best to take a trade. So if you are taking a trade, right? And let's say price is in a range. Let's say price is right here. All you have to do is look to your left to see if it was to break right here and what about the lines and right here. It needs to have clean traffic to your left for it to be the perfect trade. If it doesn't have clean traffic to your left, then price is most likely going to consolidate or range in the direction of your trade or even in the opposite direction. Do you understand it? Yeah. All right, that's good. So let's say for example, um, For example, um, um, yeah. Do you mind if I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you go back to the monthly chart? The monthly chart. Okay. Yes, I want to ask a question. Um, All right, yeah, when, yeah, when drawing your support and resistance, um, you can see the lower this long week. Um, this week. No, no, no. The long week down. This one for this, yeah, the support. Are we to put it in, into consideration? And you know, can we like? Because okay. sometimes I get confused and I put uh, the support at the lowest week at the low of the, the week. Low of the week. All right. Yes. So, so here is how you. Here is how you use it to your advantage. So, um, when people are taught how to draw support and resistance, right? Some um, are taught to use, to put the support and resistance like this, which is wrong because then your support and resistance are cutting through candles. It's, it, it is correct that um, your lines can cut through candles, right? But then it has to be strategic in a way. Like for example, right here, if you were to use this area as your support and resistance, right? It's not cutting into wicks around this area, but around this area, it is cutting into wicks. This area doesn't really matter because we are, use, we, are, we are trying to use this area and not this area. So that's why it's fine. So when you are drawing the, those ones, right, you just put it on the wicks like this. But then these are short weeks, they're not long weeks. So when you come to when you come around price actions with long weeks, right? Put your support, yeah. um, your support or resistance. Um, just if like one or two or just a few pips um below the closing of the candle or the opening if it's bullish. So it's so it will be around this year, right? Then this week 
also is support around this area. However, this support is a minor support because it's a weak. Price came down, it rejected and went up. So if you were to go on the lower time frames and let, let's try look at it. Yeah, it's around this area. This is the area, mm. right? Price yeah. came down and then it went up. So that means um, price is given us clear price action. You see this? This, yeah. this, this is clean price action. So the reason why we're not putting the, we're not really, we didn't really put the, the line in the first place, right? It's because when price, let's say price manages to come back all the way down. Let me just switch my chart for you. Okay. So, so let's say price manages to come all the way down here, right? And price mm -hmm. is around this area. This is how this would be, be a perfect trade. We have um, support here, right? So yeah. price, so price could come down and then start consolidating around here. But the moment price breaks this support, right? And retest this will be a clean move down. It will be a clean move down because A, we have clean traffic that, that, that's called a weak fill. So right now, if you're looking at it, if you're looking at it using the weekly time frame, right? We call it clean traffic because, because, we, because of this candle, the bullish candle. There is no range. There is no unnecessary things that are happening. It was a clean move down and a clean move up. That's clean traffic. But then if you are using the monthly time frame to trade using that, then it becomes um, a week. It becomes a weak feel. So on the monthly time frame, right? Hmm. On the monthly time frame. Okay, let me go on the monthly time frame. On the monthly time frame, on the monthly time frame, right? Price comes all the way down. Price comes all the way down, right? It ranges and then it breaks and then you trade it down with your take profit at the base of this week. So that, that's all. That's, that's what's called a weak fuel. When you're trading a weak fuel, that's what you're trading right now. You'll be trading the weak fuel. And weak fuels are the best to trade because there's always clean price action to your left. Like on the weak, there's just clean price action. So it's the best trading strategy ever. Making okay. sense? Yes. All right. Yeah, so does that answer your question or? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay, that's, that's good. All right, so we can leave the, the, the zone there, but then I didn't put it because price is all the way up here and this is all the way down here. And there's no, we, we both know that price is not going to make this huge move today. So price for me, price is too far for me to consider that area at the moment. So you always have to consider the area where price is at in that moment because that's what you're looking at that's what you're trading so it's so the three things that you need to remember when you're drawing your zones or the first ones i'll tell you the rest later is you only need to draw your zones where price is at and where you're expecting it to go if it breaks up or breaks below does that make sense mm. yeah so let's go on our weekly time frame um, just to be clear. Yes. Um, to be clear. Yeah. I just want to be clear about something. So when I'm doing uh, the support and resistance, is it that I must look for the lowest week amongst the candles, then I'll place it on the low. Like, like if it has a very long candle like this, I can look for the lowest 
Kandu, that's, uh, I mean, the lowest weeks of candles among the candles were beside it, then I'll place the support there. Wait, can you repeat that? I didn't hear you clearly. I mean, to be to be uh, to be so sure of where of the of where to place my support. Yes. Can you go back to the monthly? The monthly to... example. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah, we are on the monthly. Let's assume I want. I don't. I want to place my support right here. Is it I have to look for the lowest candle amongst um, this? I mean, that is the lowest candle beside this long wick field candle to place my support. Or I can just place it like, place it few pips, you know, not too far from, from, from the lowest. Yes. So it's like, do you see this area, right? Yeah. Um, so all we did was put our support just a few pips be below the closings of the below bodies. The oh, okay. Yeah, so that's that would be a support, right? And then the bottom of the week is also a support because if you were to go on the weekly time frame, there was a rejection in that area. So your first support would have been here, and then this would be your, your second support. Okay. Because okay. if because if you don't put your support here, right, and then you just put um at the bottom of the week right here, right, then you're ignoring you're ignoring this price action. Was it's it's definitely that when price comes all the way down here, it's going to find some support right here. It's gonna find some resistance, it's gonna range right here. So that's why it's better to put one there and then one at the at the bottom of the week. But it has to be a big week. You can't just put on any random week. Okay. Okay. Understood now. All right. Same thing applies for the resistance as well. Yes. It has to be a significant week. Okay. okay. Yes. So, like, if you now look at it at the on the weekly time frame, right? This is the yeah. week that we're talking about. See how you see where, where I put where I put my support. Yes. Yes. So this would be your support. And then this is the previous support that we were talking about. If price was going to come all the way down here, it is to break this support. Okay. And okay. then remember we said on the weekly time frames, um Basically, your zones you have to some sometimes you just have to adjust them, sometimes you have to put new ones or correct them. So on this one, on the weekly time frame, I would adjust it to um sorry, right here, so that it's not cutting through candles. Okay. Yes. And then this why don't you just um sorry, why don't you just put down below the week? Few pieces according to what you say. You mean here? Yeah. yeah. Is this still valid if you put it like that? Well, to be honest, putting it right here, right? I would have to look it on the on the daily time frame. Okay. Well, this is the this is a very small week, right? So my line yes. is just so my line is just cutting through the week. It's a very small week. So for me to adjust it, to put it at the bottom, right, I have to look at it on the daily time frame because we don't know what's happening on the daily time frame. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And then the next resistance I would adjust, I would adjust, right, is this one. Do um, you see this price section? So we have this price section, right? Mm -hmm. And then... This was a very nice resistance when price was around this area. Then it was going to be a very nice resistance. You see this candle? We have a bullish candle and a bearish candle next to it, right? If mm. this candle had, um, well, if it kept on falling, right? And price came yeah. in, right? That would be also another rejection. But the next candle didn't. Um, the next candle, this candle. These candles broke out. You see it, right? Mm -hmm. These two candles broke out. So to keep this resistance, 
it's unnecessary because there is no more resistance there. This candle invalidated this resistance. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so all you have to do is adjust your resistance to now support around this area. Okay, okay. Do you get it? Because the yeah, because the resistance is no longer is now invalid. Yes, it's not we have to look for the nearest support. Yes, it's no longer there. If the candles it created this support, um uh, let's say on this resistance, then it would it would now what was resistance is now support, but price didn't create the support there. It created the support down here. Oh, okay. This is where price was rejected. See, price rejected here. It went up, it came down, it rejected again and it went up. So that's where now our support is. Oh. And then this is the monthly support that we talked about that time. And it's fine like that price has to break above for it to keep on going up. You see how it has been having a hard time breaking above. It now is... You can even say six weeks it's been on this area. All right, so do you have any questions? No, 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 totally All right. Okay, so let's move on to our daily, our daily candles. Okay. Do you see how everything disappears on the daily? Yeah. Yeah, that's why that's why it's unnecessary for you to draw zones on the weekly and the monthly time frames every day. So what you should do is with the monthly time frame, you can update it at the beginning of each month. And the weekly time frame, you can just look to see how the weekly candle close. Like it's good to know that information. On the daily time frame, it's, it's also good to know how the daily candles closed. So the daily, weekly, and monthly time frames is not that much necessary to look at them all the time, unless if you're a swing trader. If you're not a swing trader, then those time frames they're not they're good to know what's happening there, but you're not going to be using them that much. But if you're yeah. a swing trader, then those are your stuff. So on the daily time frame, right, we have this support and we have this resistance, right? So price is trying to go up to break this resistance, right? So what I need is my support. I'll take this and put a support right here. Um, you think you can see why we're putting our support there? Yeah, because it is closer to the price. Yes, price has been playing around this area for a long time now. That's why we're putting our support there. And then probably another support right here. That is all I need to draw. But then if you are drawing, you'd probably put another support right here. And then right here. And then right here. You see how they become way too many sub way too many lines on the chart? Yes. It's it's for that reason why we will only be keeping the support and resistance that are closer or that are near to the price section that we're using at the moment. Okay. That way, you have the important zones, the things that you're actually supposed to watch out for that, that you're going to use and you don't have unnecessary lines because when people put too many zones, they end up reacting to the minor zones and not reacting to the actual zones or they end up reacting to, they end up putting invalid zones. They start creating their own zones. So it's always best to put things that you're going to use only. Do you have any questions? No, no, no. I understand. So let's move on to the four hour time frame. Okay, here's our four hour time frame. This is where things get interesting. You see this with this support? Yeah. This is an actually correct support. Um, can you see why? Uh... All right, let's, let's do it this way. 
Um, do you see this price action? And then yes. you see this price action. Yes. Good. All right. Now, do you see how these weeks, it's like they are attracted to one price. See, this week came all the way down, came all the way down, came all the way down. It's like this area is a magnet, right? Yes. If you look at it, if you look at it on the other side too, this week came down, this week is playing around that area. You see it? Yeah. I like that. Do you see this side also? You yes, see this week? The week's rejection. Yeah, exactly. And the best part is it's like it's all being attracted to this area. So some people, or another way you do it, right, is put a zone right here. Okay, yes. no minding. No, huh? Okay. Yes. No, no, I said no minding the candle that broke through the zone. Yes. So when you put a zone right there, right? So when you put a zone right there, right? You're highlighting it yourself, right? But the reason why we're not putting a zone and we're just putting this line right here, right? It's because we have these rejections, but price gave us clean price action here, right? And then we also have clean price action, right? And then this side, we actually have clean price action but it's just that it was a little bit complicated it was ranging but it was moving in that direction same as this side it was ranging but it was moving in that direction but price was all attracted to this area this price action where our zone is so we are putting the line right here because um how can i say it it's the area that has the most touches if you see, this is attached, this is attached, this is attached, this is attached, this is attached. I'm not going to put my zone right here because this is a minor zone. So price could come all the way down to right here, wick it out, and then go up. So this would be your zone right here. It's like um, the magic line. That makes sense. Yeah. Was, um, just was, a question. Yeah. Is it possible to add um, another support line to the lowest candle? Right here? Yes. Yes. Uh, very good it yes. Because we have clean traffic right here. So if price was to break this zone, right? Mm. It should come all the way down here. Okay. It would come all the way down here. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 So that's why it's it's good to have your zone right here. Um, another area that would be good to have your zone is right here, but then we're not going to use that price anytime soon. So I wouldn't put it right here. I'd keep it around here. Okay. Um, sorry about that. All right, so we have to adjust this one. You see why we're adjusting it? Right yeah. here, it was cutting through candles, but right here, yes. it's, it's covering all the areas. It's covering all the rejections. Okay. Do you see it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So we still have the resistance from our daily time frame you should get if you remember it this resistance from the monthly time frame actually yes from the monthly yes that's why i always say like it's not that you have to draw your support and resistance on the monthly and the weekly and the daily every day but you should just have the ones that are important highlighted so normally i would put a zone to highlight that area so that i know when price is reaching that zone that's a daily resistance and i should watch it watch out for it so we also have a minor zone right here. Do you see it? 
Yeah. Hello. All right, sorry about that. All right, we have the minor resistance right here. So if price comes all the way up here, it needs to break this resistance for it to go all the way up here. And then when it reaches, ocean come. Sorry, my dog. Yeah. Sorry, I have a puppy that likes to eat a lot of food. Okay, <laughs> so it has to break above this one for it to keep on going up. But now, this is the resistance that we have to think about. Ocean, what is it? This is our next our next target. So if right now, price is going up. This will be your target right here. Okay. Now we move on to the daily time frame. Daily or no, one hour? The one hour time frame, sorry. Okay, this is our one hour time frame. This is my favorite time frame. Was this is where I trade, this is where I do most of my analysis on. I don't need to go down all the time to know what I'm looking for here. All you need to do is know your zones, know what price is doing on the higher time frames, and then you stick to the time frame that you're trading. Making sense? Okay. All right, so do you see this zone? It is cutting through candles. Since now I'm on the one hour time. So um, one thing for you to remember, right? The lower the time, the, the lower you get, right, on the time frames, right? Mm. The more your zones are not going to make sense on the bigger time frames. I hope you understand that. I don't, I don't understand. All right. So let's say you trade on the one hour time frames. The one hour time frame zones are the most important for you. So if you're trading on the one hour time frame zones, right, you look for your entries on the 30 minutes time frame. Okay. If you're trading on the four hour time frame, then you look for your entries on the one hour time frame daily, four hour weekly, daily, monthly, weekly. Uh, that, that, okay. that, that's the best way to look at it. Just making use of two time frames, one for your analysis and one for the entry. Why can you repeat that? I said just making your use of two time frames, one for the analysis and one for the entry, right? Yes, that way you eliminate um, confusing yourself. So if you are looking at all of the time frames, right? Let's say mm -hmm. I'm here to take a trade on this time frame, on the one hour time frame, but I'm using the 15 minute time frame, the five minute time frame, the four hour time frame, and the daily. It's all not going to make sense because each time frame has its own zones that it's watching out for. Okay. They all, um, let's say the one hour going down, they are all collecting information to give us what's on the four hour in the daily. So if you are going to be um, a day trader or interday trader, right? Use mm. one time frame and look at that time frame only. But if you want to, if you want a deeper, a deeper connection or a deeper confirmation, then you go on the 30 minute time frame to see how price is moving. If it's not giving you much information on the one hour, you go on the lower time frame, the 30 minute time frame to see what's happening. The 15 minute time frame going down to the five in the one minute time frame, those are not, um, you can't rely on that. They are not stable. So the 30 minute time frame is strong. One hour, it's strong. Though that's the good time frames to trade on. Okay. Can you give ocean food? All right, so we're going to move this zone right here. Um, I'm going to just fix this one to right here. And then remember when we came on the one hour time frame, right? There was a zone that was right here. 
Yes. yes. Right. So that's done, right? We're just going to update and put it right here. Because there was a zone right here, right? Price broke, it then came up. It retested yes. with this candle. Do you see the candle? Uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it retested with this candle and it created a new support right here. And then price is going all the way up. Do you see your position? All right. So, so there's one thing you should always know. Um, price creates support and resistance as it's doing its thing. Whatever is on the left, to be honest, it doesn't matter that much, but it's a guideline. It's a guideline to where price might, you know, find some resistance or some support there, but support and resistance are actually created as price is forming or is it moving. Yes. And we have the best entry. But it's making sense, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so support and resistance are created as price moves. It's not that they the things on the left are useless, but um they are only giving us guidelines. You can't rely on them for everything, they're just giving you guidelines. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this would be your chart right now. If you're trading the one hour time frame, this is all you need. Okay. So we, if you want us to look at the 30 minute time frame. Mm -hmm. This is the 30 minute time frame. Do you see how it's all? Do you see how it's all, um, it's all connecting with the one hour time frame? Yes. Yes. So yes. I wouldn't have to do much on this. I'm just gonna use the one hour time frame. I mean the 30 minute time frame for confirmations or for entries if I need to. But the one hour time frame is already covering the zones area. The 30 minute time frame is just a breakdown to see how price is really moving and how it's reacting to those areas. Yeah. Okay. But this, but this is all what you need to know. Wow. Do you have any questions? Mm, no, not for now. But are you understanding everything properly? Yes, yes, yes. All right, so yeah. the most important things you need to remember, stick to the time frame that you are, um, that you are trading. Never have too many zones. Four zones, five zones maximum on your chart. That's the maximum you can have. Three to four zones are good. Three zones are even better. But four, four zones are also, are also very good. Five maximum on your chart. If you're trading on one hour, that's it. Right now, I'm on the 30 minute time frame, and I only have four zones. That's perfect. Um, so stick to your time frame. Never have too many zones. And um, look at the bigger picture. Look at what's important and what's unnecessary. Because right here, someone would come and put a zone right here, but it's now, an, like, I mean, this zone was there before the price action happened, but then now it has happened, right? This is now yeah. invalidated. There is no zone anymore because now we have cream price action right here. So this becomes invalid because if we have clean price action here, right? When price is falling, it's most likely 80% chance it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna have clean price action also. So that's why it's good to know what's happening. You don't have to have too many zones, but you just need to know your actual zones that actually matter and where it's gonna go if it breaks or rejects. Okay, um, I want to ask you a question. Yes. When you're making your entries, um, is it only 30 minutes that you will look for candlestick reversal pattern or is it on the one hour? It's actually both. Both? Yes, because um, I could be looking at the one hour time frame, right? Um, yeah. Let's use... 
I could be looking at the one hour time frame. Do you see this candle? Yes. Yes, so I could be looking at the one hour time frame and I get this candle, right? And this is a good candle that's saying price is um, losing its upward momentum. Yes, it's losing its momentum and price is going to fall next. So from this candle, I'll be looking for it to go down. I'll be looking for it to go down. But let's say this candle, you see the, the candle that came after? Yeah. Okay, you see this next candle, right? So I'll be expecting yeah. this candle to continue bearish, but it didn't come up too close all the way up. So that's when ah. I would go. No. That's when I would go on the 30 minute time frame to see what's happening. So when I go on the 30 minute time frame, right? I think it was around this area. Let me just check. Let me check. Um, 21 January. Yeah, you see this area? Yeah. So I was around this area. So that's when you go on the 30 minute time frame to see what price is really doing. Um, okay, one more question. Yes. When you are looking for the candlestick reversal pattern, is it compulsory that um, the body must be long, like most closed what? lower, or like most, is it compulsory that the body of the candle must close lower than the previous candle, lower than the opening of the previous candle, or higher than the previous candle. Yes. So if let's say um, you, do you see the price action right here? Yes. So we had this candle, and then we had this candle, right? Yes. You see how they kept on going lower. They weren't going up. They were going lower. So that was slowly invalidating the buys, the buy setups. But when this candle came to break the high, sorry about that. You see, it broke this high, right? When yeah. this candle broke the high, that validated the buy setups. So you have to, it has to break the the high or it has to break the low of that candle for it to continue going in that direction. Okay. Okay. Because some people you make use of volume, like volume for the entries. What do you say? I said some people make use of volume of volume. So I just they always tell me this but I don't understand. But I think I don't know. Yeah, but to be honest, it's not about the volume. Like, you don't need the volume indicator to know the volume in the market. The volume in the market, you can see it on the candles. You see these tiny candles? Yeah. There's no volume. You see these big candles? There's volume. So if you open your chart and you see tiny candles, then you know there's no volume. If you open your chart and you see big candles, then you know there's volume. Also, another way to see if there's volume in that direction or no volume in the direction, if you look at this, if you see price, actually, let's use this as an example. All right. You see price made a drop right here, right? Yes. And then yes. price, it, 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 it rose. You see, now we have a new high that was created right here, right? Yes. And then price it to create support for it to keep on going up. So if you see price making a huge move, don't enter. Wait for it to retrace a little bit, and then you enter as it breaks the, the high or the low that it the previously high. created, right? Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's your secret. So price gave us three bullish candles that is great volume. But you see our bearish candles, they, they tried going down, but they all kept coming back up to close about to close um with a very small body that showed us that there was no selling pressure so we should keep on waiting for the buying pressure so the moment you see that there is no selling pressure in those candles right then you know in your mind that confirms to you that the buys are still there so i should just wait for price 
to come and break the high and continue going up. So um, just to be clear, let's assume the three candles that close, let's assume they close below this uh, zone that we marked. Like let's assume the three candles both close below it. Wait, this, Does that, this zone? No, 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 no. The This one we are talking about. This one? Yeah. All right. Yes. Like if they let's close, assume, they let's close assume the three middle candles close below it. Does that invalidate that the zone is um, uh, and let's assume they close below it, then a bullish candle came up. If it does that, yeah, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I understand. Like, let's say if this can actually close below this zone, right? No, here. no, 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 no. I'm talking about this, uh, the three candles, the pin bar and the the doji, the three uh-huh. candles. Let's this assume one. the yes, they both closed below this zone, this, this and, one. Um, yeah, and then if this they... bullish candle close above it. All right, so so you're saying if these candles closed all the way down here, right? Yes. And yes. then this bullish candle came. Yes. But if these candles closed, let's say if this candle closed as a strong bearish candle, right? There's no way yeah. this, there's no way these candles were going to come up. They would continue going down. It's like this one. If this candle, right? Mm-hmm. If this candle had closed like this, then this candle will probably be something like this. So price would be pushing down. So for you to expect um, bullish or for bullish to continue up, right, you would want to see a bullish candle. If you see a bullish candle, then that means, okay, there is buying pressure. So price can continue going up. Okay. Okay. So, so it's, it's like, so this candle, right, if you had to close like this or like this or like this, that would push price down. Okay. But it left a low week. That means price is rejecting that law. And then the next candle rejected that law again. This candle is the one that actually tried going down, but it still came to close above. And the moment it closed like this, it made it clear that price was trying to break above. So what we have to take note is um the closing, the closing of the candles. Yeah, if they close with strong buying pressure or strong selling pressure, or if they are weak candles or if they are rejection candles. Oh, okay. Yeah, but then okay. it's but then it's not like you have to master the candles or how they are closing, right? You just need to know if there's pressure in them or not, and are they closing at a resistance or at a support. No, okay. Okay. Yeah. Like right now, you can't enter a sell trade because there is no bearish candles right here. Why would you enter a sell trade? If you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I understand. So, and um, one more thing. Uh, let's assume uh this bullish candle closed above it, above you know, above this zone. This one. Like you said. No, 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 no. This this central. This. Yeah, let's assume the bullish candle closed above it. If I want to enter, will I enter with this candle or I have to wait for the second candle to close? Um, you can enter. See, you see this candle, right? Yeah, you can actually enter like when it's closing, but you can also enter when you see it breaking above. Okay, yeah, so if I'm seeing it breaking above, right. Here's what I'll do. Um, see the 15 minute candle? The 15 yeah. minute chart. This is the 15 minute chart, right? Yeah. You see um, this candle? Yes. So when this candle closed, right? This was the first the first um, 15 of the 30 minute candle, right? When this candle yeah. closed, right? That's your entry. Because now it's closing as a strong bullish candle. Price should keep on going up, so that means the next candle that's gonna come is gonna be it's gonna be bullish also. Because price oh. did try going down, but it still came back up. And having okay. having these previous two weeks, you're already expecting price to keep on going up. No, okay. okay. Yeah. I understand now. I understand. <laughs> All right, so that does that make sense? Yes, yes. 
Yes. Yeah, I, I think that would be all for today's session. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you so much for taking your time. It's a pleasure. If you have any questions, um, uh, feel free to ask. No. And then can you also do send me chats with your zones on GBJPY? Oh, okay. Okay. With top down analysis. Yes, so that I can see if you if you're getting it all. Okay. But um, the second person has been muted for all through the day. Why were you talking? Oh my bad. So I'm not sure I would have heard everything you said. Let me ask him. All right, so you understood everything, right? Yes, yes. All right, yes, so I do. Question? Come. You don't have any questions? No, 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 not right now. Maybe if I'm going through the chat, maybe some questions might pop up in my head, so I will jot them down. Right, and I'll sure. send it to you. Sure. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it a lot. Hi, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I have your list of everything that you want us to do. So um, when I figure out, remember the schedule that I sent you? Yes, yes. I'm going to I'm going to put each topic for on that schedule for the day. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. I'll, 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 I'll send it to you once I have updated it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. No problem. All right. It was, right. it was very nice doing this with you. <laughs> it was a pleasure. I will see uh, you again you. on Thursday. Thursday, right? Yeah, Thursday. Oh, yeah, okay, no problem. No problem. Yeah, afternoon. Afternoon be anytime after 12 would be fine for me. Uh, okay. okay. I think we use the same time zone, right? Because right, sure. we are we are two fifty four p.m. by now. Yeah. New okay. York is about to open. So. All right, that's perfect. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Thank Hope you. So you have much. a good. Bye. You have a good day. All right. And you too. All right. Bye. Um.